Hey, welcome to Zoo Bricks. My name is Maxine and I'm trying to build the world's largest Lego zoo. And in today's video, we're going to be heading back to Bricktastic in Manchester, which is the UK's largest Lego show. I couldn't fit all of the stuff into one video. It was just going to be too long. So I split it into two. Uh, so let's get back into the action. I feel like the first part of the video that I posted was slightly misleading because it seemed really quiet, but only just two hours later, this is how busy it was. And we joined the action back at these custom Batman kind of hangouts and Justice League Hall of Justice. Now, this is an exhibit I was really excited to see, which was the Elm Zoo, which is one that I follow on Instagram. And in this exhibit, uh, she claims to have 64 species of animals. Now, I naively haven't even yet counted how many species are actually available through Bricklink, uh, just because like 20 of them are horses, it seems. But 64 is super impressive. There's skunk, rabbits, there's like a farmyard in the middle with a little red barn, goat enclosure, of course. There's a play area, which is cool. A lot of aquarium based exhibits. And I particularly like the bird of prey area where there was old falconers and all the birds of prey in the mews. The botanical gardens custom build was pretty impressive because that's something I'm working on at the moment. I love the mock rock in the elephant enclosure. And I thought that the visitor footpaths were really nice and there's an otter enclosure there as well. I question the reasoning behind putting a walk through crocodile enclosure out of all the exhibits, but that's fair enough. And uh, a lovely little convenience area there where people can buy ice cream too. Overall, a very large and impressive setup and it was certainly getting a lot of attention. So it was great to see it in person. And if you don't follow Elm Zoo on Instagram already, then you must look into it. There was a lot of Lego art at this exhibition and I really enjoyed seeing this James Bond representation. It was a giant 3D printed Lego goat hiding behind this castle. I love the castle and the snow details on the rock work. This is something that I think would look awesome on that little hill next to the zoo. So a castle is high up on my agenda. And what's nice about this one is it seems quite rugged on the inside and I love the thatch roof effect too. Next to them was Smaug, protecting the massive gold lair from Lord of the Rings. Loved this build. Lego space was quite a strong theme at this exhibition as well. And you also know that there was a lot of renditions of Everyone is Awesome. And there was also a recreation of the London 2012 Olympics and you can even see James Bond and the Queen dropping in there just like that little skit at the beginning with of course the London Bridge and the Red Arrows. What a cool build. So some of you may recognise this as Lego and others may not. This is the Lego Belleville which was released in 1994 all the way through uh, to the early 2000s. It's very unusual. There was a couple of really cool mocks made with these characters, but the Henry Hoover was the coolest thing. It was part of the Lego system, and here's a, a mad crazy diner as well. Then, just like the AT-80s, there were some custom Millennium Falcons in the jazziest colours that you can imagine, including a chrome-plated one, which was very, very shiny. Then of course you have some custom helmets here as well as some that are actually available on the market but the creativity is just mind-blowing. I love the colours in this build and I also love the floral wall and if you look closely there's a black squirrel in the tree as well. I've never seen a black squirrel before. So 
so much red brick went into this build and if you look closely there is a Toys R Us giraffe sitting on the entrance there. And then what was quite cool is put it up to this library was a tiny zoo. So there's a random elephant and ostrich enclosure as well as a flamingo enclosure. Now here is one of two Jurassic Park sets that were on display at the exhibition. This is a, a slightly smaller one, of course, with Spider-Man riding a giant bird, um, but what an impressive setup. So lots of different dinosaur enclosures, pure mayhem, dinosaurs chasing people, but a really creative build. Here we go, there's another botanical garden that has been modded, so it's been made into a complete set. This subway set here was seen at the Sheldon Brick Show as well, so it was pretty cool to see that in action again. Star Wars was such a popular theme at this show. And it was pretty cool to see a lot of people represent their YouTube channels here too. Love the effects of this piece that look like melted Lego. Check out this humpback whale. But it looks like he's got a tiny town strapped to his head. It's like a it's a famous piece of artwork that. Loved the tree and the colours in this build. It's a very muted green as opposed to the bright green, and I think that looks so much more natural. I look at my zoo slightly differently now, knowing that I've got the bright green, but I think the colours in this are very realistic. Just not as bright and kind of colourful as what you might expect. And here's some scenes from Skyrim. And here's another great example of a large build having to break down into pieces for transporting purposes. Because I mean, this is, this is a pretty tall, large set. Some people have totally mastered the use of Lego light kits. It's not something that I've tried, but I know people who have tried them and it's so difficult. You have to like add them as you're building. You can't add them after the fact.
love this recreation of this historic moment from creating a Star Wars film, doing some stop motion animation. This collection of animals was designed by that Rod Gillies bloke on Instagram, who actually submitted these into the official Animals Atlas Lego book. Some more micro builds, some a teeny tiny Jurassic Park there. Teeny tiny Star Wars scenes there, like you literally couldn't make them any smaller if you tried. And then here is a map of the UK and there's the Angel of the North there. So, and of course the Loch Ness Monster is represented by a tiny crocodile. And a spinning monkey, which was acting up, representing Monkey World. Here's some more spaceships. I'm afraid I don't know a great deal about spaceships or spaceship identification, so I'm sorry for the lack of descriptors on those. I'm impressed by the builds, I just don't feel like any description I can add will do them justice. This was a collaborative build where they all built these kind of floating islands or this little spaceport. I love the way that it had set this up with all the water underneath and all the islands, so it was the Teal Squadron. Very, very clever, very creative, intelligent people being able to do this. Here's one of the most popular spaceships. This is like a, a huge spinny one. They have been featured on the, the Blocks magazine and also on Instagram as well. It's like a huge habitat in there. Buzz Lightyear and Socks and his spaceship, I recognize that one. Some more micro builds of famous places. This was quite a clever build with the castles. It was a very, very difficult one to film because there was a massive treasure hunt in this one. Everyone was crowding it, but I love the Lego minifigure with the split legs. This build was created by the YouTuber High Tea Toys. She was hanging around at the show, uh, speaking to people, which was really nice, but it was really cool to see some of her work firsthand. This would have been quite challenging to transport, I feel, but I'd imagine she's got it broken down and she's mastered that. It's just the trees. You probably have to put all the trees in one box. But it was a very impressive, large build. Here is one of the largest sets at the exhibition. It was on floor level, so you could look down into it, which I thought was pretty cool. And it is a huge Jurassic Park, and there's so many little movie moments in here. Obviously a couple of the actors getting uh, looked at by the brontosaurus there. There's some homages to the new movies there with those little ball, globe ball things that they go zooming around in. There's like the visitor center at the far end. Again, this was quite tricky to film because there's so many people. There's of course the goat scene, the horrific goat scene. Here's the museum. I don't know if his head was meant to have fallen off. But some of the trees and the planting was so impressive. And of course, this is the bit where the trailer is hanging over the edge and you've got Jeff Goldblum hanging out the bottom there and the two T-Rexes knocking it around. There's the scene where they're running through the field, getting chased by the velociraptors. And the coolest bit was that the main guy that had built this Jurassic Park set was walking around with a walking stick that was made out of Lego and it had this big amber bit at the top which he had an insect, a Lego insect inside of. Here's a huge Duplo setup with trains and of course a Duplo zoo.
there's loads of Duplo zoo animals out there if you want to try and build a zoo out of Duplo, but I'm afraid they would look a little bit out of place in my zoo. Very impressive train station setup, which I'm pretty sure I've seen at Shulden Brick Show as well. Loads of different styles of trains there. Beautiful and the architecture is so neat and polished. It was a lovely build to see. the LED effect in this lava to make it look like it's properly bubbling. This is a monster truck rally display, which is pretty impressive with all these custom monster trucks on it. Monster trucks is not something that's really in the UK very much. I think it's starting to appear now, but in the States it is a very, very popular sport. This was a very colourful elf scene, um, which I haven't seen very many elf sets, but I think they're elf sets, I mean quote me if I'm wrong, uh, which is a Friends series, but yeah it was very overwhelming with the colours. Uh, another YouTube channel there that you can have a look at. The lips on this giant minifigure cracked me up. This scene was so incredibly busy, like you'd literally have to stand there forever to try and spot everything that was going on. I mean, it was insane, but so much detail has gone into it. It's unbelievable. And I love the, all the animals in it as well. There were so many little Easter eggs to look out for. There was a, a skeleton hanging around on the windmill there, going round and round and round. Here's, of course, an iconic scene from Up, where they lift the house away from the surrounding construction. Loved Kevin the bird there. He's a custom build that you can get off of Rebrickable. This display was quite interesting because it set up a black box all the way around it with some UV lights so you could see all the glow-in-the-dark elements. I've not seen a display like that before. Here's a scene from Tatooine with, of course, you can see Mos Eisley Cantina there. All these Thomas the Tank engines had travelled over from Europe, so they had created every single engine based on an actual character from the cartoon. Very impressive.
this was another extremely colorful scene uh, of kind of like an alien base where they're trying to work on saving the earth. Some really unique minifigures in there. It would have been great to speak to more of the builders to kind of learn more about why they built what they built and, and and how they did, you know, what the kind of ideas was behind it. But it was just so busy and so loud in there. It was incredibly tricky. I'm hoping that if I take part in one of these events and actually display myself, I'll have more time either on the set of day or afterwards or beforehand to actually speak to people and interview them properly next time. But as a first trial, a first attempt and my first ever visit to this thing, uh, it was still really interesting to see what it was all about. Now this particular set, I know for a fact because I've seen it on Instagram, at the end of the show the builder actually just chucked it off the table and smashed it into a million pieces, So, which is quite sad but they needed the pieces for something else and that's the great thing about Lego is you can just keep on building. So if you have a look on Instagram for Daniel Bricardo you'll be able to see that video of the demise of this build but it was a really impressive build. I enjoyed the layout of it where it was built on the top of a hill and all of the architecture. I thought it was really, really good. Here's another build that had some interactive elements where you could turn a little handle and see uh, what it did, which I think is great. I think kids must really appreciate that. They're getting told all day by their parents not to touch anything and then they can finally touch one. It's pretty cool. And of course, part of this show is usually to build a huge mosaic on the floor and people can take part uh, by getting a little base plate that they can decorate themselves. Here is the rest of the brick alley display and of course there is my raccoon build that I brought down. So it was pretty cool to see it lined up with everything else. These were collaborative artworks where groups had dished out individual sections of the artwork, hence why all the colours look so different. So each one is pieced together by several different people. And here is the LNER train, which was displayed at Shulden as well. Huge build. Loved the safari trucks and this little safari scene here and the random brick train. And it was nice to see the elephants and the lions there as well. I tried my best to capture pretty much everything in the show. I regret that there was a couple of stands that I missed uh, just because the sun was so bright, but you can find some pictures of them on Instagram. So I really enjoyed my first show down in Manchester and obviously being able to actually uh, have something on display there as well was super cool. Um, I must admit I was a little bit lame in the purchasing department. I didn't buy anything. Even though I arrived at nine o'clock in the morning, one of the first time slots, the vendors were already really, really busy. And I didn't really have anything on my hit list, if you like. Um, but of course I had a look at some Lego animals to see what was available. Uh, and I did end up buying some animals and I bought four alpacas. So they're quite cute. They are friends animals, but they are to kind of to scale. Uh, we've actually got real alpacas here at the Real Life Zoo and they are super cute. Hello. Uh, they were actually featured in last week's uh, Northumberland Zoo YouTube video, which I'll put the link in the comments there as well. Uh, and then also we took part in the like little bit of a raffle thing where they had this tumbler and you had to like reach in and pull out a brick. And I think it was either the color or the size of the brick determined what you got. So for, I think it was two pound ago, we got two minifigures. So uh, reindeer girl and another raccoon girl. How relevant. So that was it, that's all I bought. And then the next thing I did after the show was head down to Birmingham Sea Life Center. Obviously working in a zoo and being part of the zoo kind of industry, one of the biggest perks about doing that is that you get to get into other zoos for free and potentially go behind the scenes and meet cool animals. So I actually get to go and meet the sea otters. 
And I mentioned about it in a post uh, about a week or so ago, but I've had such a busy couple of weeks, so apologies for the delay. But at the Birmingham Sea Life Centre, they have the only two sea otters in the whole of the UK. So if you want to see this species, you have to go there. And they are huge. I've never seen anything like them. I've, uh, I've always wanted to go out to California and see them in the wild, but to actually see them up close. And these two were hand reared, so they're ridiculously friendly. They're like three or four times the size of the Asian short clawed otters that we have here at the zoo. And they're super friendly, but they're really weird because they haven't really got like four proper like plantar grade feet. They've got like two and then like two flappy things, a bit like seals, sea lions. So they were super sweet, got to feed them like a little ice slab, which then they kind of floated around on their backs and, and ate it. And obviously they're the ones that have like the little pouches under their arms where they can actually store their favorite rock or hard object that they use to smash crustaceans and crabs and stuff against and shells. So they've got some really, really unique adaptations. So if you wanna go and meet the sea otters at Birmingham Sea Life Center, you can do, they do do experiences as well. So it's not just, you know, for zoo people. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that second update. Uh, let me know what was your favorite display there at the show and if you went as well. And I will be back soon with a zoo update. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon.